It is a bold strategy to release two episodes back to back as though it would make much of a difference. If anything, these two show how little is coming down the pipeline, and we can already see the disappointment on the horizon like your son choosing Naruto over Gundam. If, like me, you would have picked the latter choice, well, you should subscribe. You know, good company and all. So, picking up where we left off, Galadriel is still backstroking all the way back to Middle Earth until conveniently she crosses paths with survivors and Halbrand, who looks like an Abercrombie and Fitch model that totally isn't Sauron. They were attacked by an Alaskan bullworm and left adrift on wreckage akin to the teens in Jaws 2. Now, Galadriel is questioned as to why the hell she's way out here like she's training for a triathlon, but she doesn't question these survivors for the same. Doesn't matter, because the Alaskan bullworm has found them and attacks the raft, munching the extras and blatantly ignoring the two main cast members on their little slice of the raft that Abercrombie separated just in the nick of time. After they drift for a while, a storm rages and Galadriel nearly drowns. If only we were so lucky, because Abercrombie prolongs our sufferings by saving her, and the next morning they are found presumably by Numenorians. Meanwhile, the Fresh Prince of Noldor has entered the tunnels beneath Hordern, only to be captured all five minutes later, while Baby Mama runs faster than the Flash back to Tirharad to warn the citizens of the looming threat. And they trust her about as much as a holy condom. Why? Not a fucking clue. It isn't like Morgoth and Sauron are old news. So Baby Mama runs back to her house to go and find her son Theo. Theo, who started attacking the floorboards like the Telltale Heart, is now hiding from an orc that has thrashed the home like a teenage house party and attacks both Theo and Baby Mama. And they promptly defeat it so that she can have her girl boss moment and show the orc head to the citizens who now decide to listen to her and evacuate. At about the same time, Nori and her friend have trekked down the meteor and found out that hallelujah, it was raining men. A single man, to be specific, who cannot speak the common language, has magical powers, and whose favorite game is charades. And Nori is keeping this meteor man a secret from the rest of her tribe because the rest of them are all more skittish than an agoraphobic rabbit, with still nothing happening with these characters either. Lastly, Elrond the Four-Headed travels to the Elven city of Oregion to work with Celebrimbor. You see, Grandpa Brimbor wants to build a great forge, and like any other stuck-up gold digger with a deadline, demands that it be done by spring. This is an obviously impossible task unless they ask for help from the dwarves of Khazad-dûm. So, Elrond the Four-Headed and Grandpa Brimbor fast travel hundreds of miles without horses or supplies, only to be told by the guards to basically fuck off. Elrond the Four-Headed is understandably confused by this and challenges is doer in the fourth to breaking rocks just so he can see his old friend. Should he lose, he'll be banned from Casa Doom forever, and their friendship will officially be ended on Facebook. And Elrond loses, and he is escorted out by Doer in the Fourth, and no one else, who reveals that he is furious with Elrond the Foreheaded because he missed out both on Durin's wedding and the birth of his children, because the heir apparent of Khaz of Doom is now a complete and utter bitch. Learning this, Elrond the Foreheaded shows he has brains behind that billboard above his face and convinces Durin the dim-witted to let him stay for dinner and meet his wife, Disa. And then the friendship is fixed, and all of that was for fucking nothing. But hey, at least Durin the Third reveals a mystery box because we're dealing with some students of fucking J.J. Abrams. Iluvatar, I hate this. Now, you might be wondering, did I skip a lot of details. No, no, I didn't. This episode has even less happening in it than the prior, and once again, we still aren't getting anything done. I mentioned in the last episode, check it out here if you haven't, all of about 10 minutes of story progresses between these first two episodes, and it shows. It's still early in the series, so it makes sense that we're still being introduced to new characters like Durin's the Third and Fourth, or Disa and Abercrombie, but we know there are more on their way, and I can't imagine the show is going to pick up until maybe the fifth or sixth episodes, if at all. We're going to Numenor in the third episode, we know this, and there's a whole slew of characters which is guaranteed to block up the next episode or two like you ate enough cheese to induce constipation. And on the point of story progression, something that might have helped to reduce the complaints of teleporting characters would be if this show was edited better. Obviously, the story is easy to follow, since it's slower than a quadriplegic tortoise, but if many of the scenes, say from Galadriel's perspective, were better placed across the episodes, it might make a bit more sense for time progression. For example, do away with the stupid metaphor opening, and start right away with the summary, and then immediately roll into the Forward Waith expedition, but don't come back to Galadriel until after we've completed the whole Fresh Prince of Noldor and Nori's two main points. 
then return to Galadriel and leave off with her having the choice to return to Valinor or not. Even that would have aligned the story much better than it already is, and it would be one less lump in this great big pile of shit. Although under that lump is another glaring issue the forced conflict, all of which occurs more often than our illegal wars. If the friendship between Elrond the Forehead and Endurin the Dimwitted was going to be so hastily resolved by Disa, why even have it in the first place? Why is this how most of the male characters are introduced? If Durin the Dimwitted will eventually replace the third, then I don't believe that he, like most other characters we've seen so far, is strong-willed if something as simple as a friend's absence causes you to throw a whiny fit like a celebrity on Twitter. Did you at least send a messenger, smoke signals, or a fucking email? Did you bother to think he was busy? I completely agree with Disa. Get the fuck over yourself, you whiny cunt. Why does this show feel the need to put most male characters in their place? Like Abercrombie when he was questioned by Galadriel as to why he left his people behind to die. Yeah, pot, meat, kettle, bitch, you were willing to let a soldier who slipped freeze to death because of your obsession. Not to mention you bailed the wreckage to leave these people to die. Like, if it wasn't bad enough, you're a Mary Sue, you're also a Karen? My Iluvatar, you're like the two halves of the Demon Corps coming together. And I know we're only two episodes in, but we're already seeing mistakes pop up like weeds through concrete. Obviously, Karen sues inconsistency because of the crap writing, but there's also that scene with Nori trying to communicate with Meteor Man. It's a forced perspective shot, sure, it's common for this franchise, except they aren't trying to hide the forced perspective by covering their lower halves, so you can clearly tell the actress is five feet further from the camera. Which, of course, as I mentioned before, it's due to the talent behind the show's creation being lower than half of the contestants on America's Got Talent. So, what do we have? We have newer characters that are kind of a wash, even less progress has been made story-wise, we've been introduced to a literal mystery box, which I'm confident is Mithril, and yeah, the hilt Theo found may as well be the Ebony Blade because it slurps up blood and grows a few extra inches that I never could. Two episodes in, and this show has already gassed out like a fat guy jogging. Great job, Amazon. All the money in the world, and you couldn't get me to care one iota. Oh well, next episode we're going to Numenor, and hopefully things finally pick up. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.